Saints, uh, this is Dr. Francis Miles. On behalf of my wife and my Pastor Mela Miles, we are very excited to be your pastors for Francis Miles Church Online. 2021 is here. It's exciting. Uh, listen, I, 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 this Sunday is going to be a little bit unusual, different, because I felt late of the Lord to repeat a teaching I did on our Moments of Inspired Interactive Bible Study for the beginning of the year to kind of get us wired in for what God wants to do in 2021. Because I believe that 2021 is going to be the year of building the altar that recovers all. This is a year of recovery from whatever you have lost in 2020 and beyond. So get ready for the speed of recovery. So uh, 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 after this announcement, you're going, to be, you're going to go right into the Bible study I did that I wanted to enjoy as part of this Sunday service. I'm coming back next Sunday with a message for 2021 as we continue going forward. But I felt like this message I did on to our, to our Bible study group is necessary for our members of Francis Mount Church Online to hear. And by the way, there's going to be a lot of happening on Francis Mount Church Online in 2021. We're about to fully finish the site. There's some functionalities there that we need to uh, 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 to. Um, to finalize and we're going to be doing that this month. So I'm telling you, if you haven't signed up for membership at FrancisMousechurchOnline.com, you want to do it right now because that website is a robust website that was designed to allow for interactions between me and many of our members around the world and between each other. It's really a loaded platform. You want to be able to go there. Again, just enjoy this message on um, the altar, building an altar that restores all things, which is the theme for our ministry for 2021. I believe that God is going to give you the anointing to pursue, overtake, and recover all. So, check this out. I know you're going to be blessed. The Bible says God has made a covenant with the day and the night, and they come at the appointed time. So it doesn't matter what men, evil men, might try to do in the day or in the night. The reality is the Bible tells us God has made a covenant with the day and the night. And they come at the appointed time of destiny. So we know that as we enter 2021, God is going to still be moving. And I've got a word for you that I know is going to bless your life powerfully. It's the word of the Lord for the year 2021. I believe that if you take this word, it's going to be a guiding principle for you in the days to come. I'm very, very excited about that possibility. Now listen, I, on, the, on the streaming page, you're going to find three different, three important icons on, on your landing page. Uh, beside the screen where you're able to watch me, just by, below that you can uh, make comments. I believe you can make commentary. You have, we, have, we made the comments live. Uh, but also, most importantly, uh, there is a give button. There is a become a partner. And then there is ask a question. Now, at the end of our Bible study, I try to answer questions coming from you guys because I want this Bible study to continue to be interactive between us. So feel free to ask me any question. Uh, 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 all you have to do is click ask a question and uh, you can send me a message. And at the end of the Bible study, I'm going to read what's coming from you guys. Uh, praise God. Amen. So very exciting. So my wife and I spent almost, uh, all of December, almost all of December in the Republic of Zambia. Now, Zambia is a country where I was born before I migrated to America and became a U.S. of A citizen in this nation, and now enjoying dual citizenship in that sense. So uh, we spent about four weeks down in Africa, uh, and so it was amazing to just to see God begin to move in Africa. Uh, we did an operating in the Courts of Heaven conference where many people's lives got radically transformed by the power of God. And I thank God for our partners and our friends that were praying for us. We're back in the USA and excited to be able to plow on. Because 2021 is going to be an amazing year. But what I was in Africa, beginning to contemplate and pray about, what does this year, 2020, Luke 21, is going to look like in the economy of God? Because remember, the Bible says God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. 
And I believe God has given me a position as, an, as a prophet in the body of Christ, particularly a prophet to the nations. And God began to speak to me when I was in Zambia. He said, he said Francis, 2021 is going to be the year of building an altar that recovers all. It's going to be a year of building an altar that recovers all. Because some of us, much has been taken from us because of the pandemic. Some of you have lost your job. Some of you have lost your incomes. Uh, so many things. Some of you have lost loved ones. So, they, so the, the need for restoration is in the climate, is in the, is in the, is in the prophetic atmosphere. You know, and so I want to get into that because God really spoke to me about this issue. And he said, take, take it to America. Tell your partners, your friends around the world to begin to prepare. Because in 2021, God is giving us grace to build an altar that recovers all. Recovers all. That's a very powerful, powerful technology. And I want to be able to get into that because that's what God wants. Now, uh, at the, at, towards the end of last year, I, I, I released a new book that is doing very well. Katie, Susan, and I, and I, I released a book that we wrote together and another book that I wrote by myself. Both books have to do with idols and evil alt and altars. So I've got my book, The Battle of Altars. If you don't have that book, The Battle of Altars, I'm telling you, it is a book that is exploding around the world. As people are beginning to understand that altars are not Old Testament. They are very much alive and well in the new covenant. That altars are connected to how we want God to move into our life. I'm, I've got testimonies of people who are telling me to the mouse, ever since I heard you teach on altars and I got your book, The Battle of Altars, my wife and I, or in our family, we have big, we, uh, we cleaned out the closet and we made it an altar to the Lord. And immediately, miracles begin to happen in their lives. So I really believe that as many of you take this revelation seriously and say to the mouse, I'm going to build me an altar in my own house that is dedicated to the Lord, that is a place of meeting between me and God, between me and my, uh, uh, between my family and God. I'm telling you, you're going to begin to see miracles released into your life. Please remember that what I, um, I say is the altar in the house is the one that, con that speaks to the needs of the house. The altar of the house speaks to the needs of the house. As a matter of fact, God showed me the altar of the house is responsible for paying the bills of the house. And people are actually now understanding that revelation and experiencing it. Uh, both in Africa, in America, uh, in Europe, people are doing it. Are experiencing phenomenal breakthroughs. So again, if you don't have my book, The Battle of Altars, I'm really encouraging you to get the book, The Battle of Altars. And then the book I wrote with Katie Souza, Idols Riot. Idols Riot. So you want to get those books, but I believe that there will be a blessing to you and I. Now, for those of us who might be joining us for the very first time during our interactive Bible studies that we do every other two weeks, um, you, we, I want to tell you that this, in, in the moments of inspired teaching, interactive Bible studies, we deal with a triangle of three revelations. So every time I come to you, I'm contending with one of the messages of the triangle. And these are the three messages around the triangle. Number one, it is uh, the order of Melchizedek. Number two is the gospel of the kingdom. And number three is operating in the courts of heaven. Uh, the gospel of the kingdom, operating in the courts of heaven, and the order of Melchizedek. Well, today we're going to be continue really dealing with the issue of altars because altars come within the economy. Actually, altars actually touch all three aspects of the triangle uh, because you can take evil altars in the court of heaven. That's the only place you can destroy them. And so they touch the court of heaven. But, uh, but as a tool of advancing the kingdom, altars are important tools of advancing the kingdom, but they are also an integral part of the priesthood of Melchizedek. So the battle of, so the teaching on altars actually touch all three points of the triangle. Now, so God says to me, Francis, tell my people as a prophet, I want to make this announcement. So as your people receive it, it becomes a prophecy to them concerning what I'm going to do for them in 2021. So my message today for this Bible study is building an altar that recovers all. 
building an altar that recovers all. The thing I love about the Bible is that the Bible is transgenerational. It's transgenerational and transcends the element of time. That means there will never come an element of time in which the Bible are not relevant to that specific time. Because the Bible is transgenerational. You know, it's multidimensional. There is no universe, uh, universe diverse, whatever, where the word of God is not going to have a, an authority to speak to the elements of time at that particular time. It's perhaps the reason why the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes in chapter 1 verse 8 and 9, he declares there's really nothing new under the sun at which it can be said this is new because it has already happened in times past by people who have gone before us. But the only problem sometimes we forget, we forget what the, uh, uh, the forefathers went through and therefore we end up repeating some of their mistakes. But the reality is this. Is that God wants to speak to you by the spirit of prophecy. He wants you to be encouraged. Open the year 2021 being encouraged. You cannot allow 2021 be a year for you that is controlled by the pandemic or by the virus. As a matter of fact, you know, as a matter of fact, as you, if you look at the, the understand, if you, if you have an understanding of the Hebraic calendar, you know, and, and, and begin to understand that we are within the house of Aquarius, we're coming into a season where we're going to begin to see these lockdowns actually come to an end. You know, we may be dealing with lockdowns and things like that up to some time March, but I see it breaking completely. As a matter of fact, living going in Africa, you could see Africa is being is being loosed from all the stuff where we're dealing with. It was beautiful to be in Africa because they were just having life. There were, I mean, there was a few masks here and there, but for the most part, they were just having life and enjoying God. And I believe that time is coming very quickly in America. Praise God. But God wants you to understand what 2021 is going to be. It's going to be a year where God is going to give you grace, even now, to begin to build an altar that recovers all that has been lost. In time, in destiny, in resources, God wants to recover all. So we're going to be looking at two, uh, two or three prophetic stories that bring up that prophetic principle that God wants us to understand in our own hearts. So in the book of Genesis, chapter 14, and beginning from verse 11, I'm going to read it for you. Genesis 14, and if you have a Bible, you can open it up, highlight it, because I think this is good stuff. So Genesis 14, verse 11 says, Then they took all, they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their provisions, and went their way. They took also Lot and Abram's brother, son who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and they departed. Then one who had escaped came and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, the brother of Eschor, and brother of Anor. And they were allies with Abraham, now when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his own house and went in pursuit as far as Dan. He divided, he divided his forces against them by night. And he and his servants attacked them and pursued them as far as Hober, which is north of Damascus. So he brought back all the goods I want you to see that he brought back all the goods. He brought back all the goods and also brought back his, his brother Lot and his goods as well as the women and the people. As well as the women and the people. This is very interesting. So we see uh, Abraham here has a supernatural encounter with God that comes out of what would be a moment of crisis. Because a man comes out of Sodom and tells him that his family, Lot, and all his daughters had been and his wife had been kept in captive by very vicious soldiers, very vicious uh, men of war. The Amalekites were not known for their mercy. They were very they were savages. They were savages. And yet Ab uh, Ab Lord, uh, Abraham's family is captured by such savage men of, of, of great savagery. And yet Abraham moves into the battle. God moves him into the battlefield to be going to recover what has been lost and taken away from him. 
Now what's interesting that later in the text, you're going to begin to see uh, Melchizedek coming to appear to Abraham, letting him know the reason why he was able to recover all is because God had sent his angels ahead of him. It is God who had gone before him. In other words, Melchizedek comes to, uh, comes to uh, inform Abraham after the fact that it's because God had allowed him to build, had, had, had built for him, allowed him to build an altar that would recover all that was lost. Is the reason why he was able to prevail in the battlefield against all odds. You see, what's interesting in the story is, is that the Bible says there was a man who had escaped the rampage. There was a man who had escaped. Think about this. It, 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 uh, there was thou hundreds of thousands of people that lived in Sodom. Can you imagine that the only person to escape the rampage, that means everybody was taken captive as a prisoner of war in the city of Sodom. Those who were not killed were taken as prisoners of war to a distant land. And yet, the only one who escaped the rampage, how he escaped, we're not taught. But the Bible says he, the one who escaped, the only person in the entire country of Sodom and Gomorrah to escape the rampage happened to be somebody who knew that Lot was, an, was a nephew of a covenant man by the name of Abraham. I mean, that is, I mean, I mean the mathematical impossibility, the mathematical odds are astronomical. That out of over 500,000 inhabitants of that city, that one person who would escape that entire rampage and this person who escapes happens to know that there is a connection between Abraham and Lot. I believe that this is the sovereign divine intervention of God. I believe this, that as God begins, I, I believe this, that that, that, that restoration is coming to families. I believe that restoration is coming to your family. I, and I believe it's going to come because you and I are going to escape by revelation, by attending Bible studies like this. God is giving us the grace to escape, to escape mentalities, to escape spirits that have arrested so many of our brothers and sisters. God is going to move supernaturally to cause us to escape to cause us to escape uh, those dynamics and come into a place of breakthrough like never before. You know, somebody escaped. I believe that whenever God wants to deliver the family, God raises a deliverer in the family. Somebody who escapes the world of thinking of the family. Because you see, you must understand, you cannot be a deliverer. You can't be a Moses unless God delivers you from whatever uh, spirits, uh, uh, evil altars, and anything that's working in your bloodline. I believe somebody has to escape. I believe the reason why God is using me in my family to be a deliverer is because I escaped by revelation, by divine design, by God's mercy. I escaped uh, mentalities that had some of my family members bound to certain ways of thinking that meant the devil would continue to rule the day. I escaped that. I came into understanding the order of Melchizedek. God began to deliver me by my spirit. I began to, I began to have a, a spirit of victory come upon me. I began to believe all things are possible of them that believe. Somebody has to escape. I believe this, that if you're going to build an altar in 2021 that recovers all that you lost, all that those lost to the, in the family in 2020, I believe you have to escape attitudes that, that the attitudes that only get you in trouble with God and give the devil power over you. I believe that you have to escape all that pity patty, feeling sorry for yourself because you cannot walk in the spirit of victory when you have a, vic a victim's mentality. Somebody has to escape, has to escape inferior thinking, has to escape uh, 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 um, uh, this, this sense of low esteem, has to escape the depressed, the depression that, ca that came because of what you lost in 2020. I pray to God that you are going to escape. See, there was a man that escaped the rampage. He escaped the rampage of these foreign invaders who came and uh, had ransacked Sodom and took all the goods, all the resources, and took Lot and every other human being as prisoners of war. Somebody escaped all of that. I believe the reason you are listening to me right now in this at the beginning of the year is because God has ordained you, he has sanctified you to escape.
to escape, to escape the fear that has come upon many Americans related to the coronavirus. That you escape that kind of thinking. You escape that type of fear and begin to walk in operating realms of faith where you begin to see what is possible in spite of the pandemic, the pandemic around somebody has to escape. And I believe God has ordained for you to escape. I believe you are the one who has been chosen in your bloodline to operate by faith. I believe you are the one who has been chosen in your bloodline to destroy the evil altars of your father's house. I believe you have been chosen by God to escape that which is holding your family members from hitting the place of destiny. I believe that God has chosen you to escape that which otherwise would cause you to lose whatever you lost in 2020 remains lost. I believe you are escaping that to begin to believe God if I build an altar, if I build an altar by your grace that recovers all, I believe that the recovery is going to be my portion. That not only am I going to recover friendships that I lost, family members that I lost, I'm going to see a recovery in, in resources that were taken because of the, of the chaos and the economic devastation that came with the coronavirus in 2020. I believe that as, as 2021 now uh, has risen upon us, that God is marked you for a restoration. God has marked you for a complete turnaround. Please remember in my book on the Battle of Altars, I make it very clear that God has never used a man or woman without building an altar. God has never used a man or woman who is not standing on an altar. That is, the, that is the economy of God. It will never change. And therefore, if there's going to be any kind of recovery, somebody must build an altar that speaks to God concerning the recovery that must be released into your life. Don't take what happened in 2020 as final. Even on a national level, there's going to be, even on a national level, we're going to begin to see the irreversible become reversible by the Spirit of God. So I want you to begin to get ready, get your spirit ready, because I believe that God has earmarked you to become, a, to become what? A, a conduit for a restoration that is going to affect not only you, but it's going to affect your family. And so some of us, the, the level of restoration, the level of recovery God is going to allow you to enjoy is going to affect nations. It's going to affect regions. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the Bible says this man who escaped goes and finds Abraham. Abraham was just living, being a good Christian at the, tree, at the trees of memory. Uh, being a good, let me say, being a good believer, uh, just you know, but yet God had wanted Abraham to get involved in the fight for nations. I believe that the reason why God wants to give us recovery of things we have lost is because we need resources in order to rescue nations. I believe that God wants to harvest nations. And God cannot harvest nations if, if his children are in financial devastation. I believe God cannot harvest nations if, if the wisdom of God's children are despised. Because the Bible says the wisdom of the poor is despised. That's why God wants to restore all that has been lost financially into your life. God wants to restore because God wants to put you and I in a position of stature, in a position of power where we can, we can become uh, uh, um, uh, players in the whole uh, uh, endeavor of God to harvest the nations of earth today. Praise God. So Abraham must get involved in the affairs in, res, in the affair of nations. This is bigger than just getting Lord back. It is God setting him up to become involved now as the father of nations in the affairs of nations. He must now become involved. And so he so when the man that escaped comes and tells Abraham, Abraham, the Bible says, prepared men that were trained. I believe. One of the ways we can ensure we can ensure that we uh, that, 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 that we uh, uh, the spirit of recovery becomes our portion in 2021 is allow ourselves to be trained in the dimensions of the spirit to be trained in in uh, to be trained in 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 kingdom ways of thinking that allow for the enemy to be plundered by the spirit of God. You see, we have to be trained in how to think. We have to be trained in how to build altars. We have to be trained in how to operate in the court of heaven. Because all of that is going to come together in assisting us to recover all the goods that we have lost. All that has been lost. 
Praise God. So I believe that 2021 is 2021. Anytime you can attend Bible studies like this, where you can get trained in how to f function in the realm of the spirit is a good day for you. It's a good strategy for you to effect the spirit of total recovery. The Bible says when Abraham came back, he brought back all the goods, all the goods. You see, friends, God is interested in your economy, not just your spiritual revival. As much as important as that is, God understands spiritual revival without economic, without, without, without an economy or an economic breakthrough eventually is doomed. This is why God did not allow Moses to take the children of Israel out of Egypt when Pharaoh said, take the people out of Egypt so they can go and worship God in the wilderness, but keep all the resources, the cattle, the sheep, the goats with us. Moses said, no, if we live, we are living with our substance. We are living with our goods. Why? Because we cannot worship our God in the wilderness empty-handed. Moses understood revival without an economy, a sustainable economy eventually gets eaten up by the economics. And many of us, our economics was messed up in 2020, 2020 because of the pandemic. But I prophesy to you by the Spirit of God that God is about to restore your economics in 2021. It's going to be like the pandemic never even came. God is going to make it so that in 2021, there will be a level of financial breakthrough, uh, resource, resources in your life that you've never seen before in Jesus' mighty name. God is going to recover all. He's going to help you recover all that has been lost. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, we, I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. Because in 1 Samuel, we have another amazing story that I want to look into that I think is just exciting. 1 Samuel. Praise God. The book of 1 Samuel, we have an amazing story. We have an amazing, amazing uh, se selection uh, where, where we find uh, a story where David, where David uh, comes to Ziglag. He comes to Ziglag. Uh, he's living in Ziglag. But, some, but, but the calamity befalls King David. And uh, when they come to Ziglag, the Bible says this in, in 1 Samuel 30, beginning from verse 1, it says, Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city and there, there it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons, their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinon the Jezerites and Abigail the white widow of Nabal the Carmelite had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the, the, the priest, I Melech's son, please bring me the ephod there to me. And the Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fear recover all. Pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fear recover all. My God, listen my friend. Is there an altar that you and I can build in the spirit that allows us to recover all? The Bible is telling us here there is such an altar. David is living at Ziglag as God's chosen man. is living at Ziglag. Hallelujah. He's living at Ziglag. And then he comes back to the city of Ziglag 
only to find that the Amalekites had invaded that territory, that David, David's home, and destroyed everything. I mean, there was nothing but rubbles left. There was fires of, of, of warehouses used to be. There was fire. Some of us are feeling like that because of what we went through in 2020. Some of you are small business owners. have not been able to operate your business effectively because of all the lockdowns, and you lost thousands of dollars in revenue. You, it feels like your business is burned down to the ground. It feels like what you thought was going to be a thriving business has become ashes. Can I submit to you, there is an altar. There is an altar in 2021. God is going to give you the grace to build. It's an altar that recovers all. It recovers all. I'm telling you, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel because God says the, your best days are just ahead of you. Because you must understand, I believe that there are some things God gives to us that he allows the enemy to steal. I believe God gives us things that he ordains for the enemy to steal. I said, Dr. Mouse, why would God give me something that the devil is ordained to steal? Because I believe it's because God is, wants to uh, reenact or to activate the law of restoration. You know what the law of restoration says? You find it in, faith, in, in the book of Proverbs chapter 6. And it talks about the thief. When the thief is found, he must be, he must, when the thief is found, he must be made to restore sevenfold. Even if it costs him everything he has in his own house, he must restore. So I believe there are some things God gives to us knowing the enemy is going to steal them. He bets the enemy to steal so that when we locate that it is the enemy and the enemy has done this, then we can go before God in the court of heaven and we say, Lord, we have legal standing against the enemy who is a thief who has come to steal that which you gave to me. Now that the enemy has been found, according to scripture, the law of restoration must now be in place. He must restore or he must restore. And restoration causes God to give you more than what you lost. In restoration, God doesn't give you what you lost. He gives you more than you lost. That's the essence of the law of restoration. So I believe there's some things God allows us to have, knowing they're going to be stolen, so they can become bait, or they become the seed for a recovery uh, from the hands of the enemy, that uh, will cause a restoration to take place in our life that will, will, will crown us with more wealth than what we lost, will crown us with more power than what we had before. I believe that. I believe that God was orchestrating in the background what was happening at Ziglag, Ziglag, because the Bible tells me that God, there, there seems to be, have been a re divine restraining order that was hovering over the uh, the chud, over the over David's camp, because the Bible says these invaders who are who are stone called killers did not kill the children. They didn't even they didn't even kill the animals. These guys were savages. And yet, the Bible says, uh, none of David's people were touched. None of them. How possible is that? And this God is working behind the scenes to make it so that David's people are not touched. That tells me God allowed these invaders uh, to come and invade the territory where David was staying. So God could ransack them for what they had taken from other nations. Because when David came back, he didn't just recover his family. He didn't just recover uh, the animals that were taken. The Bible says he literally recovered the wealth of several nations that these invaders had taken from other countries. That means the restoration was more than what David lost. Friends, I believe God is about to give you and I the grace to build an altar, a place of meeting, to build an altar that recovers all. That recovers all. You see, David had his men even thinking about stoning him. That's how discouraged they were. David's men that were loyal to David for the first time began to look at David and saw him as the source of their trouble and were about to kill him by stoning. But David began to encourage himself in the Lord. 
I believe that one, uh, one of the ways you begin to build this altar, begin to build this altar of recovery, this altar that, that, that will cause you to recover all that you have lost, is not to get caught up in the emotions of the people around you who, have, who are crying because of this and this that they have lost because of the COVID. I believe you have to rise above it and find a way to encourage yourself in the Lord. Find a way to encourage yourself in the Lord. Because the next thing that happened, because that self-encouragement, that ability to break away from the emotions the, 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 of depression, discouragement that are in the environment because of the devastation that has happened, that ability to, for David to rise above it and begin to encourage himself is a master key to be, that begins to lead him to build this altar that will eventually lead to total recovery of all that had been lost. Because the next thing David says lets us know an altar is involved in the recovery of must, what, what must be done. Because David, even though he's from the tribe of Judah, turns around. He turns around to Abiathar, one of the sons of Aaron, and tells him, give me the effort. Now this has huge implications because the ephod was the holiest garment in Judaism. It was the holiest, holiest garment in the entire priestly order of Levi. I mean, a non-Levi could not wear the ephod without risking the judgment of God immediately. So, and yet David is from the tribe of Judah, like our Lord Jesus, and he turns to Abiathar, uh, the son of Aaron, and says, I want the, 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 the robe of the high priest. I want that priestly robe, the high priestly robe. Give it to me. Uh, 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 and David uh, puts, in, puts on the ephod. That it is very powerful. He puts on the ephod, and yet he's from the tribe of Judah. That lets us know whatever priestly dimension David is now functioning in cannot be from the tribe of Levi because he was not born a Levite. He was born from the tribe of Judah. And yet here he is putting on the priestly garments of a priest. Glory to God. He's putting on the priestly garments of a priest. And yet we don't see lightning coming to strike him, which means whatever he's doing has been legalized in heaven. Why would this be legalized in heaven? Because David now is not operating in the order of Levi. He was operating in the order of Melchizedek, which is very, very important because uh, the first story we looked at in Genesis 14, when there was a recovery of all that was lost, Get, guess what priestly order was involved in that recovery? The order of Melchizedek. Now we fast forward to David. He's lost everything. He doesn't even know where to begin to bring back his business. He doesn't know where to begin to recover what has been lost. And yet he put on the ephod that allows him as a member of the tribe of Judah to begin to function in a priestly order that's higher than Levi, where you don't have to be part of the tribe of Levi to function in the priestly order. He functions in that order of Melchizedek. And as he's functioning in that order of Melchizedek, recovery begins to come to him. This tells me that the order of recovery that we are looking for is found in this order called the order of Melchizedek. As we begin to understand this order of Melchizedek and begin to understand that in the new covenant, in the New Testament, we are not operating under the order of Levi. We are operating under the order of Melchizedek. Because Jesus has become to us a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. That being the case, then we as New Testament believers are under the order of Melchizedek. But since the order of recovery is tied to the order of Melchizedek, we find from these examples... That this order of recovery is tied to the order of Melchizedek. Then when we are under this order of Melchizedek. Then we can believe God to activate on our behalf this priestly dimension. To activate on our behalf this priestly order. Uh, that allows us to recover all that was lost. Hallelujah. So today when you go before the Lord, if you lost anything in 2020 that you want to see recovered in 2021, I want you to go before the Lord, kneel before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm a member of the priestly order of Melchizedek because I am part of the body of Christ. Jesus is my head. I am the body and Jesus is a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. That means if I'm part of his body, I'm part of that priestly order and therefore because this priestly order 
controls the order of recovery, the order that recovers all things. I am making a demand, Lord, uh, uh, before you for a recovery of what has been taken by the pandemic in my life, in my ministry, in my business, and begin to see a move of God than that, that you have ever seen before. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So while David uh, puts on the ephod, guess what David becomes? David becomes a mobile altar. Because you must understand, whosoever was carrying the ephod became the altar. Whosoever was carrying the ephod became a place of meeting for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As soon as David put on the ephod, God knew he had become a living altar. He had become an, a, a mobile altar. And God began to speak to David as David began to inquire of the Lord. This tells us one of the strategies to recovery in 2021 is hearing strategies from heaven. I want you to begin to ask God for strategies of recovery from heaven. And God is about to give the body of Christ strategies of recovery. If you're a businesswoman, businessman, and you think my, your business is done, I beg to disagree with you. By the spirit of prophecy, hear the word of the Lord. God is going to give you, uh, is going to give you strategies of recovery. And you're going to begin to see recovery begin to happen. So David inquires of the Lord. That means in this season, hearing the voice of the Lord is going to become very, very important. Praise God. Hearing the voice of the Lord is going to become extremely important. Glory to God. So the Bible says, David inquired of the Lord. And he said, shall I pursue this trip? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him and said, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them. Can I submit to you? This is the year when God is going to give you supernatural grace to pursue that which took from you. And you're going to overtake the enemy. You are going to overtake the enemy this year. And you are going to recover without fail that which the enemy thought he had taken from you for good. It's not going to happen. You're going to begin to see God move on your behalf in an amazing way. Without fail, recover all. Without fail, recover all. That is a guarantee God is giving to us. That if we embrace this word of the Lord. Say, Dr. Miles, I want to begin 2021 believing God for recovery. Some of you, the recovery is in your health. Some of you had the COVID virus. And now you are, God has delivered you. You, 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 you know, you survived it. But some of you, they messed up your health. And some of you, it was just that in 2020, in 2020 the enemy took your, took your health from you. Can I submit to you that in 2021, a spirit of recovery is being released right now. As I'm speaking, I sense an anointing for recovery. Recovery of your body. Recovery of health. Receive that. There's an altar the Holy Spirit is going to help you build this year. By His Spirit. It's an altar of recovery. It's an altar of what? Recovery. And without fail, you're going to recover everything. That's when David began to move forward. Begin to, begin to move forward because he understood. Now God had given him a strategy on how to go and recover all that has been lost. So I, I, can, I, I believe today that God is releasing apostolic strategies, prophetic strategies that are going to allow you and I, my friends, to recover all that has been lost. All that has been lost. I want you to believe that. I want you to believe that. Because I can tell you as sure as I know, my name is Francis Mouse. I prophesy to you that recovery is headed your way. Is headed your way. 2021, we're going to begin to see what was broken in 2020 even get fixed. Even on a national level, we're going to begin to see the fixing of what was broken in 2020. God's going to begin to fix some things. We're going to begin to turn some things around. And I want you to release your faith for recovery. I want you to tell God, God, I'm releasing my faith for recovery. And I declare that I'm going to recover all that has been lost without fail. Without fail. 
Now, there's a one or two things I want to show you about this bit of recovery before I open up the, uh, to some questions and prayer times. I want to do this to show you a couple of scriptures here. When David now goes to, he goes down to begin to uh, pursue the enemy. In verse 11, of, uh, it says, Then they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. And they gave him bread and he ate and they, he, they let him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two classes of raisins. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him. For he had eaten no bread or drunk water for three days and three nights. Then David said to him, to whom do you belong? And where do you come from? And he said, I'm a young man from Egypt, a servant of the Amalek, an Amalekite. And my master left me behind because three days ago I fell sick. We made an invasion of the southern area of the, of the Cherites in the territory which belongs to Judah and of the southern area of Caleb, Cal, Caleb and we burned Ziglag with fire. So David, you see, David had no campus. He had no ability to find the enemy. The enemy had a three-day three head start ahead of David. Three-day head start. How do you experience recovery from an enemy who was at a three-day three head start ahead of you? We begin to see some of the some of the things God is going to begin to do as He begins to cause you to recover all that you have lost. God began to say, Francis, had David not been hospitable, one of the keys to recovery in 2021 is hospitality. You need to be hospitable even to people without faith. Because you don't know who's connected to your recovery of that which has been lost. You see, they could have been cruel to the Egyptian. They could have ignored him. They could have bypassed him. He was sick. He was tired. He was hungry. They could have completely ignored him. But David, as men bring him to David, David does not call for his execution. Instead, he feeds him. He takes care of him until strength returned back to him. And guess what? He carried intelligence about how David could find the men and women, the, the soldiers who had destroyed his family. And if you follow the story, it is this Egyptian who eventually guides to David where to find where his family was and how to ransack the enemy. So David came back with a mighty spoil of war with his family intact, his animals intact, and with more money than, than, than ever because he got more than what he lost. Why? Because he was hospitable to an Egyptian in the field or in the marketplace. Can I submit to you that one of the ways you are going to sustain this altar that recovers home is a spirit of hospitality to those with faith or without faith. I'm telling you, you do not know who holds the key to your recovery and therefore you have to be hospitable to the people God is placing in your path of recovery. There is a path of recovery and on that path of recovery, God has placed men and women who are connected to your recovery. So don't just be so caught up in yourself, so angry, so bitter. You cannot notice the butler is next to you who can take you to your pharaoh. You can recognize the Egyptian who is who's sick and hungry is the one who knows the, who, who carries the information I need to make up three days where the enemy had a head start. You see, you need to understand that. So this man, David was hospitable. He did not uh, mistreat this Egyptian. He could have easily done it, but he did not do it. So may I submit to you today that this author of recovery is going to require you to be hospitable. The Bible says some people for, uh, do not even, uh, uh, because they're not hospital, hospitable, uh, we're not even aware the day God sent an angel to minister to them. They didn't even know the day an angel of the Lord was sent to give them the breakthrough that they need. So I'm praying to God by the Spirit of the Lord. That God is going to make you sensitive as you come across men and women that are connected to your story of recovery for 2021. Mark my words, God has got an Egyptian out there who's connected to your recovery. And as you build that altar of recovery, it will begin to call towards itself all the resources, the people that you need for your recovery. Glory to God. Glory to God most high. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know I'm talking to somebody. Hallelujah. You can allow yourself to become so self-absorbed that you do not see that God has given you an, an opportunity to minister to somebody in the midst of your own pain. Because that person you are ministering to is actually connected 
to re-engineering your comeback, re-engineering your restoration. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you go deeper into the story, you begin to find out that David recovered all that, he, that had been taken away from him. So we see that author of recovery, again, making itself clearly evident in the life of this man, uh, 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 David. Praise God. Well, my final story that I'm going to pray for you right now uh, of recovery is found in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 5 and verse 25. And the Bible says, Now a certain woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years. 12 is a number of apostolic government of God. A flow of 12 years. For 12 years. And had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was not better. Uh, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus... She came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. And touched his garment. For she said, if I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? And looked about and to see how who had done this thing. But the woman feeling and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And, said to me, and said, he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your plague. She was fully recovered. The King James used the word recover. I believe that even her health is going to be recovered in 2021. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but I sense an anointing for healing right now. In Jesus' name. Somebody is being healed right now. Sickle cell is being healed right now. Somebody with this sickle cell is being healed right now by the Spirit of God. There's a recovery, my friends, in 2021. God is giving you and I the grace to build an altar or to allow us to recover all that has been lost. God is allowing us to build that altar. Allow us to recover all that has been lost. In your health, you're going to begin to see a recovery. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody with arthritis in your right hand, very, very severe. Sometimes you can even bend your arm like this. Very painful sometimes. And God is healing you right now. There's a heat coming around your, 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 your right hand. And God is healing you of the arthritis. See, this is going to be a year of healing and recovery. There's a recovery. There's a recovery. Remember what I said. Build an altar. If you have a home altar, if you already have an altar in your house, go home and kneel before the altar and you say, Lord, not only is this and prophesy, not only is this altar in my life going to be an altar that speaks to the house, but I prophesy this altar is going to be an altar that speaks day and night concerning my recovery. That the altar of God will not stop speaking to the elements, to creation, until all that has been taken away from you has been recovered. That means every devil that has been holding on to your stuff must be broken by the power of God. So you can get the recovery that you deserve. That God is bequeathing over you by the spirit of prophecy. So I want to start out the year with a prophetic message. Because God does nothing unless, of course, he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So all I'm saying is this. I want you to believe God for recovery. Now listen, uh, I just want to give you an opportunity to give into, as you go into this new year. There are many ways you can give into this ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we want you to give, you an, an, give an opportunity to be able to give into the ministry here. But I know that God is going to be able to touch your life, touch my life and your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is going to be able to touch your life in a fresh and new way. I want you to get ready. Right there, if you're on our website, just below the, the video screen, there's a way you can give. Give, you know, praise God. I believe if you have a giving slide, you might be able to see the giving slide show up. But I can tell you that, there, that, 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 that when you're giving to this ministry, there are many ways you can give to this ministry. You can give by mail. And thank God for those who are giving by mail. By the way, 
we put whatever giving we take. My wife and I, we put the giving of our people, the reports on the giving. The, we, we put them on our altar. If you come to our altar, you're going to find a big bowl. We have a big bowl in at our altar where we put all the giving. We take, I mean, we just, we take pride in just putting it on there and crying to God for our, our givers day and night before the Lord. Friends, you can give online at Francis Miles that come for us. Let's give. Or you can give by Zelle, info at francismiles.com. Or you can text to give to this number, 469-410-7982. Or by Cash App, uh, dollar sign Francis Miles. Or Vinmo, at Francis Dutch Miles. Praise God. So I want you right now to give your recovery seed. Give a seed. Or you, you cannot build a new altar without putting a seed on that altar. So I want to encourage you to put a, a seed to be, to, uh, to give a seed into this ministry and to signify that you are setting up a new altar in your life in 2021, an altar that recovers all and then begin to expect God to begin to recover all that has been lost in your life in Jesus' name. I'm feeling led by the Holy Spirit to just pray for you. Lead everybody into the court of heaven and ask for the spirit of recovery to be released over your life. So wherever you are, amen, uh, I want you to get ready to give. I also get ready to pray with me as I take you into the court of heaven. Praise God. Just take a picture of the different ways to give so that even when the broadcast is over, you may be able to give in one of the ways we have in front of you. Praise God. But right now, I just want to lead you into the court of heaven as we ask the Lord to eat to, the, to release a spirit of recovery into our life. I want you to pray this prayer after me and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus that gives me access to the court of heaven. I thank you as I come into the court of heaven, Father. I realize that, Father, it is your desire. It is your joy. It is your good pleasure to give me the kingdom. As I come before you in the court of heaven, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come before you to prosecute everything, every, every, every spirit that has stolen from me that which you ordained for my God-given destiny. I bring before you all everything that has been working against me. Every spirit of the Amalekites. Every spirit of plunder that has come against me. Everything that has, every spirit that has stolen from me in 2020, Lord. I file a lawsuit against these demonic spirits in the court of heaven. And I'm asking, Father, for the supernatural prosecution of these spirits and their evil altars that they will not be allowed to plunder my life anymore. And I'm asking, Father, that, that, that the law of restoration be activated because it says when the thief is found, he must be made to, say, to pay seven times. Lord, I have found the thief and it's the, sea, it's the devil who has been stealing that, was, that which has, you have ordained for my life. I'm asking now in the name of Jesus Christ, that the law of recompense, the law of restoration be, be activated by the court of heaven in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to wash me by the blood of Jesus from anything in my life that has given Satan any legal rights of any kind to plunder my finances, to plunder what belongs to me. I declare that those rights are revoked and destroyed by the blood of Jesus. I declare and declare, Father, that now that Satan's rights have been revoked and destroyed, that all that has been holding, holding, holding that belongs to me must now be released by a righteous verdict from the court of heaven. Father, I thank you and I give you the praise and the glory that an altar of, of, that recovers all is being released in my life in 2021 in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for the grace to build an altar that recovers all like David did, like Abraham did. I prophesy that there will be a recovery of all that has been lost from the hands of the enemy in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you and I receive this victory. I receive this breakthrough in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. I believe that if you pray that prayer, I believe that God's going to begin to release the spirit of shift in your life and things are going to begin to shift supernaturally in a powerful way in your life in Jesus' name.